Hi guys. I just want to say thank you for all the kind uh, words that you've uh, had to say about my design here. I've really appreciated it. I'm making this video to um, clear up some issues, some people, hopefully to clear up some issues that uh, some people have been having in the comments about some problems they've been having. So I'm just going to address the the uh, the, co the ones that I saw were addressed the most. And the first one being, uh, well, no, let me start off with first. I want to, obviously, you'd probably already know now that the rear of the machine is great for storage. This is where I keep my power control. This is where I keep my uh, temple uh for, for when I do need it. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is the, uh, what I've, think is a very great addition and this is my extension hose so I don't have to have the propane tank up here by the device and it comes with this hook so I just hang it on my on my drawer right there and uh, it works out great it's not in the, the bottles not in the way uh, I will put a link to it I got it at Harbor Freight I think it was 16 bucks um, but I'll put a link in the description. First thing I want to talk about is uh, I got a comment about the drum getting too hot and the uh, bolt and nut, essentially the shaft and the nut essentially melting. I have never had that issue, but I want to do point out some things that uh, would help you to prevent that. I believe this one here is printed in PLA, but <clears throat> if it was printed in ABS or PETG, it would be obviously more heat resistant. So that would be the first thing I would do. Two is when you've got this flame on, you want to make sure the flame is not blowing onto the drum because obviously the heat will transfer to that. And if you'll notice mine, I hope you can see this in the video, I've always got a slight angle out away from the drum but still pointed at the neck when I'm annealing. <clears throat> that will help keep the flame off the drum. Another thing I want to point out that uh, I had to change torches. So this here was my original torch. I've had this for over 20 years. I love the pencil flame that comes off of it. But I wanted uh, something that I could strike easier without having obviously matches or something and if you notice i drilled a couple more holes in here because i went to the shorter ignition uh, torch and so i had to move it closer so i'm going to be updating my plans to include those extra holes but it's obviously i mean anybody can do that on their own but what i really like about this is now all I have to do when I'm ready, I can just come up here and turn it on, click it, and, and it's lit, and then and adjust it from here. I don't like this flame as much because it has a little more flare and is a little more apt to touch the drum, but I have not had a problem with it uh, yet. Next thing I want to talk about is the drum feeder alignment. Let me get this plugged in. I had a question about, you know, how does it have, have to be aligned? Well, as a general rule, and I was messing with them, so this, this, one, this one is not lined up. I generally have the cartridge feeder at 12, and I will put this at 3. Bottom line is, as long as it puts a cartridge right here before it dumps the last one out, I mean, you're good to go. So you got a lot of lead, leeway on that there. The other question I've had is, well, actually, let me get back to that. So you notice I have these eighth inch spacers. If you've already printed it, there's a eighth inch spacers that are behind these things. And the reason why I pulled that out at eighth inch was so that the cartridge didn't catch on the lip of this drum here. And that's another thing important when you're making the drum, make sure that is 
totally flat and there's not still a curved lip on there. <clears throat> now I've had some comments about um, if you have a shorter cartridge and I'm thinking, well, 223 uh, is a pretty short cartridge, but the common was someone has a 300 blackout, which I don't have, and it is about a quarter inch shorter than the 223. And so the question was, obviously the neck isn't sticking out far enough from this drum. Um, so, a couple things to address that. Um, on my 223s, let me get this out of here. On, on my 223s, as you see it's sitting in there, I didn't have a problem with the axle melting here, but I did notice the drum was getting hotter than on my other cartridges just because I have to have this torch a little bit closer to the drum and it was flaring out to it. So I made this just a piece of tin with a magnet on the back of it that I slip, slip on here and it brings out the, the uh, cartridge a quarter inch. And so that took a lot of heat um, off of this here. And as you can see, it still, still feeds just fine. And that's another thing that uh, I want to comment on that um, if another choice you have to allow yourself shorter cartridges, my first thought would be I think you need to have two separate drums, one for a shorter cartridge and you know this one for the rest. And as an example, this thing will feed 30 out six even with that uh, a cork. Yeah, not one, of course. Even with that shorter, my extension on there, it still holds it because most of the weight in the back. The unfortunate thing is because there's less resistance against the drum. Sometimes the spinning might stall and you do need to have good spinning on it. So it's uh, so it happens all the way around the through weight Is pretty good. But my recommendation is the drums are only five bucks cut two of them down one of them one of them shorter than the other and uh, I think that'll take care of the issue for you. I have had people ask if there's going to be a construction video. I, I, I have a friend that uh, and is, is interested in wanting one, so when we make that one, I will probably uh, put that video together. Um, but for now, I do not have one, but it is kind of in, in, the, in the works. Um, another qu question I keep getting is, is there a, a list of all the components, the extra components like the motor and so forth and this drum, that you need to get to complete this project and it's it's in the file list on Thingiverse if you'll just look in the 23 files that are listed there several of them are, are PDFs being drawings of, of the device but there's one called annealer miscellaneous parts dot PDF and that is a list with all the links in it uh, most of them Amazon links to where you can get these parts I originally had the links uh, in in the Thingiverse, but they kept getting screwed up somehow, so I put it on the individual file. Another comment was parts fitting uh, very tight, and people had to do some sanding to get them together, especially between the axle and the gear. Uh, a couple months ago, I went ahead and edited the gear, and I expanded it just, I think, one-tenth of a millimeter. I wanted the parts tight because I didn't want any slop while this thing was running. And obviously your tolerances have a lot to do with uh, your shrinkage rate of the uh, print media that you're using, uh, different settings on different machines. Obviously it all can't be accounted for just by me. All I know is when I print mine out, they fit right together perfectly. And of course, that's what I was looking for. Okay, that should uh, cover this video.
Um, sorry I suck at doing these videos, but I, I'm just not very good at it. Um, at the end of this will be some B-roll of me doing some 223 and some 308. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the hopper is completely full with, with uh, 223s. It holds 300 of them, and it cranked right through them. And uh, so, yeah, thank you.